Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about exponential regression word problems. The increasing number of frogs living in a forest is shown in the table below. Let 1989 be year zero. And what that means by year zero, anytime you see that, is they're saying that that is the first year the data was collected. So they want us in this problem to write an exponential equation and then based on past data, predict how many frogs will be in the forest in year 2026. So let's look at this data real quick. And it told us up front that we were increasing the number of frogs. For each year that passes by, it tells us how many frogs were in this forest. And as we can see, our numbers are pretty rapidly increasing overall. The great thing about exponential regression word problems is that the calculator does most of the work for us. We just need to be able to input our data into the calculator. Now, one thing that we want to note before we do that is that we've got an X and Y table here. Our year is going to be our X. And our number of frogs is going to be our Y. We can't put a year value into our data set. We need to translate to the calculator what those years actually represent. Like we said in the problem, let 1989 be year zero, because that was our first year data was collected. We're not going to put 1989 in the calculator. We're going to put zero. And so then we have to think, okay, if 1989 is year zero, what would 1993 be? And there's an easy way to figure that out. We can always just find the difference between the two years. So we can take our larger year, 1993, and subtract our smaller year, 1989, and that will give us four. So that tells us that four years have passed. And we can do that same process for each of these years. To speed up our time, though, I'm going to go ahead and let you know what each of these values are. So if 1989 was our starting year, then 1994 would be year five. Five years have passed from 1989. 1998 would be year 9. 2003 would be year 14. 2005 would be year 16. And 2006 would be year 17. So now that we have our year number, we can go ahead and put our data into the calculator. What we want to do is use this stat button. So we want to hit that. And then we want to input this data into our list. And so we need to edit our list first. So we're just going to hit enter. And now you'll notice we've got list one, list two, and we even have a list three, but we won't be using that. We only have two lists for this problem. So we're going to go ahead and put our year values into our X column, which will be our list one. So all you have to do is type in zero first, and then if you hit enter, it jumps up into the list. Four, five, nine, 14, 16, and 17. And then we'll right arrow over to the list two, and we'll add our number of frogs for each year. 57, 104, 372, 698, 920, 2034, and 4081. So now that we have our data in the calculator, we want to hit stat again. And this time we're going to right arrow over to the calc tab. And then you can either scroll all the way down to where you see exponential regression. It's going to be number zero right there. So once we get on this page, we can also just hit zero. And we want to just hit enter through this information. And it's going to bring up our equation. So let's interpret this information. They've asked us to write an exponential equation, which is our information here. Let's quickly note what an exponential equation is made up of. It looks like y equals a times b to the power of x. And they gave us that up here, a times b to the power of x. They're giving us the form that it should go in. 
and A is going to be our starting or initial value, B is going to be our rate of growth or decay, and X is going to be our time. Here they've said A is 66.18 if we round to the nearest hundredth. And it's okay to round this value. Just keep in mind the less you round, the more exact your answer will be. But for our purpose, it's okay to round to the nearest hundredth. Our A value is 66.18. And then our B value in our parentheses is 1.25. And then if we're just writing an equation, we just leave x as x. So this is our exponential equation for this data. You may have noticed that I mentioned that a is our starting point or our initial value. And the a for our exponential equation is 66.18 which is different from the actual starting value of our data, right? Our starting value of our data was 57, and that's totally fine. This equation is aligning all of these data points as best it can into an exponential form. So it makes sense that the starting value may not match our actual starting value. Our second instruction says based on past data, Predict how many frogs will be in the forest in year 2026. So they're basically saying if we added another data point down here, then what would be the predicted number of frogs? And a key word there is predicted. This equation is just taking past data to help us predict future data. We have no idea what will actually happen in real life to this frog population, but Models like this help us predict what could happen based on past data. Essentially, they're giving us x and they're wanting us to find y. Now, I can't put 2026 into my equation. We need to know what is the year number that would go along with 2026. So to figure that out, we can bring our calculator out and say 2026 minus our starting year of 1989, and we get 37. So 2026 would be year 37. And we want to know what is the predicted number of frogs for year 37. So all we have to do is bring our equation down, and instead of x, remember x is our time, so we're just going to put in 37 for x. And now this, we can just type in our calculator. 66.18 times 1.25 to the power of 37. And we get a huge number. Now notice we get a decimal. And we can't have 0 .087 of a frog. So we're just going to round to the nearest whole number. So that would be 254,916 frogs in year 2026. Let's look at one more example together. So this one says the decreasing value of an item that was purchased new in 2008 is listed below. So looking at our table, we've got our years as they go by, and then the value of the item. And as it mentioned in the problem, the value is decreasing over time. We're asked to write an exponential equation, and also, based on our past data, predict when the item will be worth $1.92. So we need to put our data into the calculator, but before we do that, we need to figure out our year numbers to be able to list them in the calculator. Now, as it mentioned in the problem, this item was purchased new in 2008. So 2008 is going to be our year zero. Now, what I like about this problem is you'll notice that each of these years are in chronological order. So they've just collected this data information, the value of the item, every single year. So 2009 would be year one, 2010 would be year 2, 
2011 would be year 3, 2012 would be year 4, 2013 would be year 5, and 2014 would be year 6. Now that we have our data laid out, let's bring out our calculator and have it write an exponential equation for us. So remember, we're going to go to stat, and then we need to edit our list, so we'll hit enter. Now you'll notice I still have my data in here from the last problem we just did. I'm going to show you a quick way to clear your data out. One option is just to totally clear your calculator. And to do that, you would hit second plus 712. And when you do that, that'll reset your calculator. But a faster way would be to clear the lists individually. So if you scroll up to L2 and then hit the clear button and down, and notice that clears out list 2. You can right arrow over to L1. We want to highlight L1, clear, and then down, and it'll clear that too. Now let's put in our new data. So we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is our x column, because remember, year is our x value. For our list 2, we're going to put in our y values. $40, $35, and 50 cents. Now you'll notice I put a 0 in, 50 cents, and when I hit enter, the 0 is not going to show up. 0.5 and 0 0.50 are the same thing. 29.61, 21.20, 21.20, 21.30, 21.40, 13.24, and 10.99. We can hit stat again, right arrow over to our calc tab, and then we can just hit zero for exponential regression. We're going to hit enter through all this, and there is our equation. So we've got our y equals, now in the place of a, it says to put 42. Point, and again, let's just round to the nearest hundredth, 42.81. In our B value in parentheses, we're going to put 0.79. And then for X, we just keep it X for our basic exponential equation. Now they've said based on past data, predict when the item will be worth $1.92. So in the previous problem, they gave us the year, they gave us x, and asked us to find y. In this problem, they've given us y, $1.92, and they've asked us to find x, because they say when, predict when, the item will be worth $1.92. So we need to figure out what year our value would be $1.92. So here's how we're going to do that. In the place of y in our equation, we're going to write $1.92, 1.92. And then we'll have our equals, and then the rest of our equation, and then we'll just have x, because x is what we're trying to figure out. That's what we're trying to solve for, our time, our year value. There's a really quick, easy way to solve this on the calculator. What you're going to do, and I'm going to write the steps here, is in our y1, and the way we get to y1 is this y equals button up here, so we're going to hit that, and in our y1 equals, we're going to put 1.92, $1 $1.92. Then we're going to arrow down, and in our y2 equals, we're going to put this part of the equation. So 42.81 times 0.79 to the power of x. And so what we're doing by creating this setup is we know that if we set these two values equal to each other and we graph them, they're going to intersect at our answer. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to graph this, that would be our first line. That's our horizontal line at $1.92. 
And then this line coming down, that's our exponential equation, which we have listed here. And we want to know where do these two lines intersect. I can't see it here. It looks like, though, it's probably going to happen somewhere over here. So I'm going to need to adjust the window range on my graph. And the way that we do that is we hit window. Now before I actually hit it, let's think about what we want. We just want the graph a little more this way so we can see what's happening over here. We don't need it to go up more or down more or to the left more, just a little more this way. The way we tell the window that is we go down to X maximum. So this side of our graph is going to be our X maximum. How high does X go? Right now it's set to 10. That's just our standard window view. Let's just double it. Let's put 20. And we'll hit graph. Now we can see where these two lines cross each other. So we want to know what is that intersecting point. The way we figure that out is we hit second trace. And then we're going to either go down to number 5 or hit number 5, intersect. Now this little spaceship, I always think of it as a spaceship, shows up. Now we want that spaceship to land right over here on that intersection. So we're going to right arrow over till we get to that crossing point. It's right about there. And then hit enter three times. So we see that this intersection happens where y is 1.92. Remember, that's our dollar value. So y is at $1.92. And our x value is, let's round to the nearest hundredth again, 13.17. So our y value was 13.17. Now, remember, we're talking about years. So 13.17 is our year number. So that would be our number in our parentheses. And because all our other numbers were whole numbers and we're talking about years, let's go ahead and just call this 13. So we have to think, what year would year 13 be? Remember, 2008 was year zero. So all we have to do is say 2008 plus 13 years. And that will leave us at 2021. When they asked us, based on past data, predict when the item will be worth $1.92, well, it will be worth that in year 2021. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. I will post the answers in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.